one station making history every day. Chicago, Chicago. Now, John Cass and Lauren Cohn. 89, Yeah, sometimes they come for you, mm-hmm. and sometimes they come for stuff you love. You know, just about everybody's walking around with these, right? I've with got what? one. Do you, have an, do you have an iPhone? I'm not carrying a gun now. This is not the... Uh, this is the only state where you can't carry guns. Right. Maybe you wish you what had was, one because what were you saying? Cause now, basically, there's this big alert in River North. Folks out there, they are coming after your iPhone. And they're not just running up to you and saying, give me your iPhone. These are violent robberies in River North. We had, uh, this was back on March 10th, 400 block of North Dearborn Street. Two men approached a victim on the sidewalk, placed the victim in a headlock, forcibly removed an iPhone and wallet. From the victim's pocket. And the second incident on the 600 block of, of Dearborn, that was 5 a.m., you know, when people are maybe getting up and going to work. Two men approached a victim on the sidewalk, grabbed him by the arm, began walking with him, threatened him. They wanted the iPhone 5. So people are just take, beating you up over your iPhone. In River North, which last time I checked is populated by taxpayers. Yeah. Right? And what, by that I mean people who are not used to dealing with this kind of problem. Right. And it's interesting because I was talking to uh, some people up in Lakeview yesterday when I was up in Lakeview, and they were telling me uh, we were at a Starbucks. People were talking about I was there with my nephew who has an iPhone, and I said, you know, Joe, if you're going to be walking around, put that thing in your pocket. you got to be careful. And I was telling him about the warning, and he said, you know what, Aunt Lauren, it's happened in Lakeview. Some teens I know were jumped for their iPhones. you got to be careful wherever you are, put those iPhones away. All right. So then how do you how are you supposed to use a phone in the city without <laughs> taking it out of your pocket? Do you have to go I have to go to a restaurant, buy something so I can sit down with my back to the wall and use an iPhone? Yeah, or at so least, I don't get beat up, right? And you, and especially if you're commuting early hours or late at night and there aren't any people around, that's when you have to be really vigilant. And in certain neighborhoods, we think, oh, we're fine, and we might not be, because apparently these are the hot ticket items. It's just, see, those are the things that, that's when people wake up about crime. Mm -hmm. We could have 500 people shot in the city, and maybe Hadia Pendleton gets shot, all of a sudden she becomes a perfect victim, and then President Obama invites her her mom to the Easter egg roll, and that's supposedly, you know, a big symbolic deal. But for most people, it's the kind of crime we're talking about. Mm-hmm. They steal your iPhone. Somebody gets in your face. They push you around. Things like that. They don't get in. Or you you just walk around scared. What well, it's like of- years ago when the the, the high the carjackings were big at gas stations in the middle of the day, and they were targeting women especially, taking their cars. Lisa, we're taking your calls, 591-8900. How do you use a phone in, in the city so you don't get it ripped off? Lisa, are you there? Um, well, the reason why I heard Lauren talking about this immediately, and we've known about this, we were, um, uh, my husband's, uh, my husband was, <laughs> my husband's, my husband was, uh, informed by a Chicago cop about this very thing, and what's happening is that, um, the bangers are going to areas where iPhones are abundant, and what they do is that they call it apple picking. You mean it's better than going to say Michigan with a little with a little bushel? Hey, hey, you know what? That's their little clever nickname, apple picking. That's right. Silly. Put it in the basket. Nice. Except for they're doing it with a you know side of muscle and a threatening with a weapon. So, that's exactly right. So Lisa, and that's their whole their whole plan is you know uh, whatever the day is or whatever the time is they decide in in whether it's groups or couple you know they go down and and they go into areas that they know they can grab a bunch of iphones and a lot of these kids today have iphones these young kids have them that's exactly right that's why when i heard you say river north i thought this is apple picking territory do you have children lisa no now i have two boys they're teenagers okay Mm -hmm. they're you know in high school juniors I don't want them down. You know, they come downtown to see to be dad. 
you know, like on a day when they have a half day. Right. I don't want them to take their phone out. Well, so how no. are they supposed to, you know, but we're used to the phones now in terms of navigation. and Right. You know, right. I they're don't want so- to. I didn't mean to interrupt, but no, you're right, John, because they're so oblivious because they're on their phones, and it, they're almost like, uh, you know, a spotlight is on them. It, they're targets, and they don't even realize it. You know, Lisa, when I was growing up in New York City, you had to be vigilant. My mom always said, I always walk in places, whatever you're doing, where there are crowds of people. If you ever feel threatened, jump into a store. And right. everybody's got to be on alert these days now that if you, if you do have your iPhone or wherever you are, you want to use it. Maybe use it where there are people around. You're in a crowded place. But just be very careful not to walk alone. And Well, right. Yeah. But you know what? We've heard that sometimes doesn't stop them either. True. You know? Well, thanks, Lisa. Anybody else? Uh, thanks for your call. If anybody else has their iPhone issue, 591-8900. I want to know, too. How do I tell uh, my boys how to use the phone and not get jumped? Uh, let's see. Uh, Jeff in Antioch. Jeff. Uh, hi. Um well, it, it's uh, more of a preventive thing to where you first thing somebody showed me when I got my iPhone was to download this app called Find My iPhone, and right. with that you can disable certain things. Um, you know, if your iPhone is stolen, then you know it could be recovered. Like you, know, you can show the location exactly where it is. Is you can you can delete the data on the phone. Um, Etc. You know, just for anything that might, you know, the the thieves might find useful in the iPhone. You know, contacts. It's you know maybe uh, certain passcodes, numbers, etc. So you make it um, basically non-usable, right? right? And you can right, b- yeah. run to a you can run to a computer and you can and you can go on that website. But at the same time, the scary part about this is they're not just taking the iPhones. These they can be violent. They can hurt you. And well, how do they take the what are the in the in the robberies, uh, mm-hmm. Steve uh, or Jeff? What how do they uh, what do they do? Come up and punch you right in the face and then take your phone? Mm-hmm. Is that what well, they do? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, you know, like I said, there's nothing that there's only so much you can do to to uh, to keep them from physically taking the the phone unless you're you know you're. Uh, if you're armed yourself. But. Unless you look, unless Lauren Cohn is standing next to you, because no one would <laughs> dare. You should see when yeah. she gets upset at me during the break. I <laughs> get scared. I'm so tough, John. You are such a tough guy. But yeah, right. I don't know. You know, it's just uh, there's a fail safe. You know that at least they can't get the data, and then if you have insurance on the phone, well, then you know you can get another phone. It's the phones can be replaced. It's just a matter of. Yeah, but your face can't be. You can't, yeah. No, you know, no. and that's the point, right? Thanks, thanks, Jeff. We're taking your calls, 591-8900. Police are warning about, uh, you know, in the River North area and elsewhere not to use your phone. What kind of society, I sound like old man daily. Right, What kind no, of society, right. you know, you can't mm-hmm. use your phone, 591-8900. John Cass, Lauren Cohn, first traffic and weather, first on the fives with Ryan Burrow. Lauren Cohn, John Kiss. Lauren uh, brought up this really interesting thing. The f- iPhones, right? The police mm-hmm. are warning us not to use. You yeah. can't use your own phone, Yeah, Lauren. you got to put it away. So should Hard we take to do. some calls? Yeah, let's how take about, some calls. How about Patricia? Patricia in Chicago, tell us about it. Yeah, we, we go down to River North a lot because my mom lives in that area. And just over the last like few years, it's gotten so bad there that we bring an old fake phone. Because it's not just that they're getting jumped for the phones. It's like big groups of teenagers that are, like, beating up these people for the phones. So can't you bring a fake phone, you have your real phone, like, hidden, and then you carry the fake phone by your ear or something? Yeah, we, well, we just put a, the fake phone in, our, in, like, my purse, and I put my real phone in my pocket. Got it. But I wouldn't be walking around using an iPhone there. Yeah. In the same way, like, the... The doctors and other ones got taken. There was a doctor just sitting on a park bench using an, an iPad, I believe, last summer. It was the summer before, and he got jumped for it. Yeah, I interviewed the uh, another doctor who was trying to walk three blocks from the hospital to his house and got jumped. But right, exactly. and I guess it's no big deal. We don't need police, right, Ron? We don't need more cops, right? Well, but, well John, John, your point is that the, the taxpayers live there. I, it's also the tourist district. I mean, like... Why would someone come from the suburbs to go to the city to go to the great restaurants if they're afraid, you know? I don't understand, Patricia. So you have the fake phone in your 
purse so that when you see a, gr- a mob of kids that are teenagers that are going to punch your lights out, you just throw them the phone and run the other way? Yeah, I'm just prepared. If I'm down there, I'm going to give up my phone. You're going to give them the fake one? Yeah. Is and- that like an Android? Not to be funny, but... <laughs> <laughs> that is just Patricia. What does that tell us about our our city? That when we have you, to sit there have and to bring fake, fake phones. phones as like bribes to roving thugs. What right, does that tell exactly. us? Yeah, especially because there's so many great restaurants and shops down there, you know. And but you don't like if this gets out past Chicago, what's going to happen to tourism? You know, so you have the taxpayers. That's a high tax district. Cause there's a lot of you know right. fancy places there. But also that's Michigan Avenue where people come when they're out of town. Well, thanks for your call, Patricia. I'll keep that in mind. I, I uh, Thanks for the call. Yeah, I, and some of those crowded areas, I mean, there are more people, John. I don't think it's less likely that it may happen. It may happen more on these, you know, you, one or five in the morning. When thugs come down, people see and they get scared. And it's like the Christians and the lions, basically. John on the phone. John. Hello. John, you're on with Lauren and John. Yeah, you know, hi. Good morning. Enjoy your show. Listen, I'm um, traveling between Champaign and Bloomington. In Europe, I was telling your call screener, in Europe, they have a plan where if your phone is stolen or lost, if you call the carrier and give them your phone number, they can look up the electronic serial number on that phone, and they disable that phone forever. So, so it can never be used again, period, end of discussion. So hopefully never you're again. with somebody that has a phone that you can use to call once they've taken your phone. I right? beg your pardon? So hopefully if you're by yourself, though, and you lose your phone, you need to get to somebody... Get on the phone somewhere else. Oh, yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you lost your phone, let's say you were, you know, traveling somewhere and you lost your phone. As soon as you could get to a regular phone and call the carrier and tell them this is my phone number, um, I lost my phone or it was stolen, they'll go in and take that electronic serial number. And as I said a moment ago, they'll disable the phone. It can never be used again. And 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 then you have to. It, they could do that in America, but for whatever reason, AT and T, Verizon. Uh, some of the, the carriers here don't want to do that. I, and I don't know the reasons, but in Europe they do that. And as I said a moment ago, it can never, they will never reactivate that phone again. Even if so you it, find it? Worthless, it becomes worthless at that point. What if what if it's lost and found and you recover it again? You can't use it again? Uh, it's been in that case, down. I don't know. Right. I don't know what would be. Um, well, there may be some way to go around that. I mean, obviously, if you took the phone ID to, let's say, an AT&T or or Verizon store in America, you might be able to get it reactivated. All and right. that may be the case in Europe. Okay, but, you know, what, you're, what you're talking about here is somebody beating you up to get your phone. If, if it's known that the phone has no value once it's gone out of my possession, then it, it may eliminate that chance of being beaten up or whatever, you know, vandalized or whatever you want to call it. Thanks, John, on the road. Thanks. A very hey. interesting call. Thank you so much for calling Lauren and John. Uh, Lauren and John will be back in a bit, but... Uh, Oh, I got some time. Listen, when we come back, we're getting calls. I want you to stay on the line. We want to answer them. But when we come back, you know, there's another way. You know, the fake iPhone thing? Mm -hmm. There's a street thing to do when you're walking around and you're worried about getting robbed. You have uh, uh, 20 20 singles in a roll in your pocket where you can grab it. Mm -hmm. Somebody, And it's not on on a rubber band. Somebody starts, people come up and demand your money. You, th- you throw, throw the, the money air. one way and you run the other way. Yeah. All right? And never go into the alley when they tell you to go into the alley. Just throw the thing and run or throw the phone and run. But is that what we've come to now? You can't walk. I mean, is that where we are? I'm reading some of these texts that people are actually afraid to come into the city. That's ridiculous. That scares, that's scary. Um, John Cass, Lauren Cohn. We're back after this. When you see trouble on your commute, call the 89WLS traffic tip line and let us know. 312-984-CARS. That's 312-984-5277. If you're looking for some wussy PC filters on your news, you're not going to get them from Lauren Cohn and John Cass. Here's a text from 847. I just carry one of those stun guns that look like a cell phone. The Utes get a big charge out of it. The Amish texter. Excellent. So, there you go. Okay, Steve and Joliet. Steve. Quickly. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for taking the call. Um, concealed carry. All right, what does that have to carry do with your phone? Got a new uh, term or a new definition now. I'm talking to you on my 
iPhone 5. It's in my pocket. I've got my earbuds in, and I hope you can hear me. I'm walking down the street with my uh, mic. You know, the earbuds are still a tip-off, but... Yeah, yeah kind I mean, of. they certainly are. It's like, what's in your pocket? Thanks, Steve. Um, let's see, uh, uh, Bob in Streamwood. Bob. Hey, good morning, Jan and Laura. Uh, you know, I used to come downtown. I like to see a, a show once in a while, you know, on, on the senior discount day and stuff like that. <laughs> I will not make a trip down into Chicago anymore. I, in fact, I don't. It's just uh, it's just too risky. It's a great town, man. I, I know. I hate to great, hear that, Bob. I hate it's it a too. Great, it's a great town, John. But you you take a a senior walking up north on on Michigan Avenue, you know, you, way back when, you know, you, you just can't go into those areas. All right, Tom. Listen, I want you to go into those areas, just not at two o'clock in the morning. This is John Cass, Lauren Cohn, News with Ryan Burrow. It's ten thirty.